Whoa! Welcome back to the studio, Ryan, aka Bloodshot Airbrushing, aka Bloodshot Pinstriping. <laughs> Today, we're gonna put down the airbrush and we're gonna pick up the striping brush and we're gonna tackle some ribs. Yes, I've got a client that's got a gnarly Nissan 370Z and he wants to add a little bit of flavor, aka some red pinstriping onto these rims and we've also got a little license plate cover off to the side. So that's our tutorial for today. Um, let me show you my setup. I'm going to spin you around and we'll get right on into it. Pinstriping rims. The bloodshot way. And I thought real quickly we'd just show you these rims. They are pretty sweet. Pretty slick indeed. And no, we're not pinstriping everything. We're just going to do a nice little red ring around the outside of these rims. And the bloodshot way, as you know, is always... Super simple, yet effective. So let's get in on it. And I'll just show you my little concoction that I've built here to get myself rolling. Or should I say spinning. This is just a Lazy Susan platter. As you can see, it's quite deep. So what I've gone ahead and done is I've taken these boards with a little bit of carpet stapled onto them to allow it to roll or spin smoothly over top. I got a little bit of cardboard just to prop it up a little bit so it is kind of on the right plane as this thing as well. And this guy just sort of sits in the middle like that. And now she can spin nicely. And I've even gone as far as to put double-sided tape onto my platter that we're gonna slap this board on right in the middle like so and then the tire will go on there kind of like that <laughs> i'm gonna need two hands to get this guy into position but i think you get the gist and there we are in position and again, look at how smooth that baby rolls. Spins. Yeah, same difference. Okay, now that we got that spinning, we can move on. And first things first, we need some brushes. Arrgh, pinstriping brushes. Why do I always... <sighs> I always seem to... Uh stack my bench to where it's impossible to get out my paints oh wait this will be nice and easy ah, we're gonna do fire red and i think with this one we're actually gonna mix in a little bit of hot pink just to brighten it up oh yeah uh tickle trunk let's uh pop this guy right here and let's grab some of our gear uh, we're going to need the mineral spirits for thinning and cleaning the paints. I've got my glass microwave tray, old school, and a candle holder. Crazy old school. Um, I like these flyers. They're kind of a, a laminated flyer, nice and thick. Paint seems to hold up nicely on this without going through, and it does flow nicely onto the brush um we'll probably have some mistakes along the way so a cloth to clean those i like these little strips and i just have a little cubicle remover oh that's part of it it broke a while ago and i'll use this as a handy little eraser with these little strips of fabric wrapped around the end of it kind of like so uh, I think you get the idea. And that should be good. We don't need any water-soluble pencils for this one. Because we're pretty, pretty much just tracing the body line. Alright. We've got the gear. Oh, and brushes. Yes. 
let's pick a brush for today um we're gonna want a nice fat line that can be seen from a nice distance not crazy fat but let's go with the mac mac zero today that should give us mm, a nice line and for filling in our license plate i do believe one of these shall do kafka number four cool moving on all right we're all set up i got my brushes soaking uh, a couple things i kind of forgot was uh a brush for mixing so just an old beat up paintbrush got that soaking uh you'll need a flathead screwdriver for popping open these lids i've got my cleaning solution and a microfiber bag so we can clean the rim before we put any paint on it and i've also got some one shot hardener that we're going to mix in with our paint all right let's do that right now let's start mixing up some paint as you can see we skinned over another reason why these screwdrivers come in handy and paper towel forgot to mention paper towel <laughs> we'll be going through a bit of that i like to keep things as clean as possible moving through the process so here we're just gonna add a little bit of pink and mix it up and add a little bit more pink until we get the color we're looking for all right now we'll add some hardener and i have found that keeping my hardener in these plastic containers lets it sit a little longer with these ones once your hardener starts to cure man it just turns a little hard it's hardener it's what it does <laughs> so we're just gonna eyeball this at about 10 percent give or take give or take and now ideally for this stuff to flow you want it at about the thickness of motor oil this is far thicker, so you'll add some mineral spirits until you have that consistency of paint. And you'll notice this stuff will dry out as, as you go, so you may have to add some more. And I know you guys want an exact ratio. I just don't have that to give. This is still too thick. So we're just going to add a bit more mineral spirits until we get something that flows nicely off the brush but still covers your background color. All right, we got everything set up for a lefty, well within reach of my surface. And I've actually got myself a bit of a step stool just so that I have a better vantage point for laying in these lines. And the next thing we got to do here is we're going to clean this with some of my fantastic and our microfiber and we're just going to give these rims a quick cleaning before we do anything else so we're going to prop you up on the tripod and we'll go from there and i cannot stress enough how important it is to get your surface good and clean before you lay down any paint especially if you're not going to be clearing over top this is what's going to keep your paint on that surface is having that surface nice and clean right, we're going to take our brush just dry no paint and we're going to figure out the best position to have ourselves in here so that we get a consistent line as we spin this around now personally me being a lefty i'll take my middle finger and i'll rest it just on the edge of that rim that way as i'm spinning the brush does not move i hope that makes sense if you're right-handed, you may want to spin it the other way, flip it, whip it, and don't be afraid to dip it in paint, that is. <laughs> all right, with our brush all loaded, let's finger where you want it. You want to be pretty confident with this. You don't want to be shaky. You don't want to be second-guessing yourself. You're going to lay your brush down, and you're going to spin, and you're going to call it done. For the most part. You ready? 
Man, blast off! And you'll notice that middle finger working as a guide to guide me along the way. Even pressure applied to that brush. And the speed of rotation really isn't as important as the consistency of rotation. Tip for the brain box. Quick touch up. And what we are touching up here is the little area that got a little thinner than the rest. So I start a little bit ahead of it and bring my brush down and bring it a little bit past. Like so. And we are on to rim number two. <laughs> And as before, center it and give it a good cleaning. All right, load it up. All right, and the first one went super smooth. And in a perfect world, you'd hope they would all go that way. But rarely, rarely do they. So I am going to slower on down for the second rim. I know, I've been doing this for a few years, guys. So when I can just slap it on there, spin that rim, get her going really quickly, that's experience. But I know a lot of you guys are beginning... So, <laughs> again, as I was saying earlier, the speed of the rotation is really less important than the consistency of the rotation. And I'm sure it's not a surprise that consistent lines require consistent movement and consistent pressure. And one of the drawbacks about moving so slow, you'll see here. Yeah, we're running out of paint on the brush. So... Time to reload. So, go back just a little bit. And meet up with your line. And we're just going to start it all over again. Get that rim spinning and get that paint flowing. Get that flow. Yes, the flow. That's what it's all about, kids. I'll even hold my breath in hopes of helping stabilize that brush. But the beautiful thing about these pinstriping brushes, these long quill brushes, is they do work like a bit of a rudder, so they do tend to take out a little bit of shake. If your hand's a little shaky, it doesn't translate down to the surface. And as you see, as this turtle rounds the bend... I wasn't entirely happy with the way that line joined up. So we grab out the cloth and we just quite simply wipe that section out. Now a good habit so you're not transferring paint from one end to the other, Ryan, <laughs> is to shuffle around that cloth to find a fresh clean section. And what I typically like to do is start from a top edge and sort of slightly pull it down to a point. And then work it back up to a point on the other side. Spin her on around so you guys can get a better view. And again, watch my middle finger as it works as a bit of a guide. Watch as that brush, we apply the even pressure to the tip. And allow that to transfer a nice line to the surface. Like so. Oh, oh, there you see. I just tap my finger with the tip of that brush as I pulled back. And you'll notice I cleaned it off right away just so there was no opportunity for me to transfer paint down to the project. And here you'll see we lose any place to put that finger for a guide, so I'm just floating that hand. Again, even pressure. And voila! There's many ways to achieve it. It's the end result that matters. <laughs> and on to rim number three. It's as simple as can be. Third time's a charm. We're just going to run this one real quick. As we have other things to show you. One being, once again, clean any paint that you drop onto your hand. And... I think my hair actually went in the paint. You guys would know better than I would. Yeah, I've got some little stragglers here where the red paint's been lifted and shifted we're going to, have to clean that off right to there no harm no foul and yet another technique for erasing these lines pushing down and wiping away and then coming back at it to just give it that point so that you have an easy join Redo that. and for this one being a longer one 
we're gonna rock it on the other side so I can use my finger as a guide. Come on, you, you saw that one coming. <laughs> and here again, we go nice and slow, just to show you it doesn't matter how fast you go. Dr. Seuss will be proud. Ooh, oh. <laughs> we were way off at the end there. Yes, we did, didn't we? It it yes, happens. it does. Don't stress. Paint's not dry yet. Yes, do not stress. Stress only leads to frustration. Calm the mind. Center your being. Center your brush. And in the words of Gandhi, live as if you'll die tomorrow. Learn as if you'll live forever. Oh. <laughs> Just like so. I mean, if anybody knows what they're talking about, that guy, that guy, definitely. Here we are, I got a little speck in my paint, so I am using the same technique of just grabbing a fresh piece of that cloth and lightly wiping it off and back in to touch it on up. Floating that hand once again, we do what we gotta do to get the job done. And that job, good sir, is done. <laughs> well, it looks like somebody hit the curb. Now a little bit of chip of the black. We'll actually touch that up before we move on. After we're done the red and before we call the customer. <laughs> Let's get that stripe on there first. Then we can dab any blacks on the rims that we need to do. I saw a couple spots on another rim too. Nothing major, but we may as well make it pretty. That is why they pay me. Keep telling yourself that. And for rim number four, I'm sure you are yawning and reaching for the door. So we're just gonna burn through this one. It actually went quite nicely as they tend to do once you have done one or two. <laughs> it just comes too easy. I'm sorry, I apologize. And that one turned out quite well. And it should be the last one that does. Practice does make perfect, as they say. No such thing as perfect, but pretty darn close. <laughs> All right, let's get on to that license plate. Um, that's the rim you're pointing at. We'll touch up the black later. I don't think I need to record that for the channel. It's pretty much just dabbing in some black. Yeah, right. Yeah. Alright, let's slide in some letters, and the first thing you'll notice is pinky placement. Using that pinky as a bit of a brace to keep your brush floating above the surface, and realistically, these embossed letters are probably going to be some of the easiest ones to do. All we are really doing is just filling that valley with paint, so a good thing to keep in mind, it's hard to kind of see on this angle, but we want to keep that brush as vertical as possible. Keep it as straight up and down and just follow those body lines, trying to hit each edge on one pass. And then you can go back in and just sort of fill the center, build it up because it may take a couple times to cover the black. And you may see I got a little hiccup on the top of my Z and one little hiccup there. And one little hiccup here. I find it's best to, to just keep running that brush, adding paint, and then you can come back once you got a couple hiccups to fix. It's a bit of a time saver. And here's my handy little cuticle remover with just a strip of a t-shirt and just one quick little wipe. Then slightly roll that t-shirt on the edge of your cuticle remover for a fresh section before you do another little wipe. And you'll see you can do this about three or four times before it starts to pull back and then pull off your cuticle remover. So again, grab yourself a fresh section and give her a little wipe. I use this handy little tool for the majority of my one shot paint removal and back in with the brush. Again, pinky braced, floating above the surface and just filling it in. You want your first pass to kind of go edge to edge, nice and clean. And then you can double back, making sure you've got everything filled in between. 
and because of the nature of this one shot paint being as it takes hours to dry you can kind of get in there with a brush and move the paint around a little bit and kind of hide any brush strokes and I think that's going to be it for real time on these bigger letters because, yeah, this video is getting a little long. And as you can see, it could take a while to get through it. Be patient. Hold your breath when you need to <laughs> and clean off. Clean it all off in the end. There are some areas that get really tight that you just may find that you can't get in with the brush. So don't be afraid. Just get in there and wipe it off later. If you're able to get it all perfect the first pass, good on ya. I like to think we all get lucky sometimes. <laughs> I'll take it if I get one letter that runs perfectly, and I'll clean the rest. It is what it is. It takes what it takes. We do what we do to pay them bills. <laughs> hey, look at that. Perfect letter. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> I don't believe perfection exists in paint. Something I must relay to my customers. It's as good as it gets. But that was pretty clean. That one came out quite nice. And we'll pitter patter, get at her, move on to the next letter. And again, we hit you that real time R. We're just going to burn through the rest of this, progressively getting faster and faster. Because I don't have much more to say about this the whole vertical thing was uh was iterated oh hey if you get any fluff in your brush pick it out right away <laughs> don't let that mess up the rest of your project if you have a pooch in the studio happens more often than not nah he's a good boy we have now chased those valleys with our brush to fill it with paint and now we're chasing those edges with our little cuticle eraser to clean up dim edges. <laughs> and we'll finish off the rest of these letters. Well, actually, all of these letters we're done with the Kafka 4. But for this little tornado, we're moving to the Kafka 1. And there you have it. Storm Chaser painted in cherry red 370Z. It's that easy. And we'll take one last look at these front skinnies in their fancy new red pinstripes. Came out pretty clean, if I do say so myself. And the Storm Chaser license plates. And the back fatties. All dressed and ready for the show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and there you have it, guys. Rims pinstriped on the easy with a lazy Susan. I don't know how I'm going to get that tape off there, but we'll figure it out. And that's kind of it for this one. Nice quick little tutorial. One parter. Get her done. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comment section, and I will be sure to get back to you in due time and uh there's like hardly any room to like walk in this place right now so i'm gonna get these guys shipped and out the door and on to the next like seven projects <laughs> all right guys you know how it goes like follow subscribe Thanks for coming along for the ride. Cheers. And feel free to slide on down to the Bloodshot Airbrushing webpage to grab yourself up some PDF French Curve downloads. This is the first set of six and the first of many. Or fly on down to the Bloodshot Airbrushing Spreadshirt page. Grab yourself up some gear. And don't forget, guys, we've got plenty of airbrushing for beginners videos, plenty of airbrushing hacks, and plenty of airbrushing tutorials, pinstriping too. <laughs> Tell the world the Bloodshot Army is here to spray.